And we're welcome, here. welcome to the panel. Thank you for joining us. We are very happy to be here with you this evening. You can join us every Wednesday at 8 p.m. on our YouTube and our Facebook channels. So follow us, leave a comment, like, share, tell a friend to come and join us today for our interview. I am Kathy Goodall, and I am a connector of dots, people, brands, and businesses, and I'm a part of the Emerge Trio. Hi, everybody. Hi, Rushi. Hi, Nai. Hi, Kathy. And I'm Naomi oh, Garrett, um, a personal branding coach and the founder of Garrett Communications and a part of the Emerge Trio. Hi, everyone. Hi, Nai. Right. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> the nice to wasn't meet answering. <laughs> My name is Rochelle Cameron. I'm part of the one third here, quite evidently. And I find I look splendid in yellow. I should wear yellow more. But when I'm not wearing yellow, I'm an attorney at law. I am CEO of Prescient Consulting Services Limited, a boutique consulting services company that offers impactful, strategic, legal communications and HR services. Oh, Thanks. Welcome, Thank Rochelle. Welcome. Thanks. Dale, how are you? Yes, tonight is going to be great. Hi, Hi, Esther. Hi, Esther. Hi, guys. So everybody probably is wondering. Everybody's probably wondering why we're in yellow today. And so today, globally, we celebrate. Um, well, this entire month, we celebrate Childhood Our Cancer Awareness Month. So everybody knows the pink ribbon, right? That we used to, to acknowledge breast cancer and to do fundraising for breast cancer, but people don't readily think of childhood cancer. And the gold ribbon or yellow ribbon is actually what is representative of childhood cancer. So today in particular, we are honoring all the brave children that have dealt with cancer, all of the brave children that have survived and the families that have experienced it. And so we just wanted to stand in solidarity and to acknowledge um, Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, this entire month, they'll be doing blood drives for children with cancer. So you can donate blood. Uh, we're also, they also started an Instagram challenge asking parents and children to do 50 jumping jacks together and posting it just to build awareness about child, childhood cancer. So this is why we're all in yellow tonight. And what's, what's the hashtag for that challenge? Hashtag support a child with cancer and hashtag childhood cancer awareness. Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah. So we're but all I, I doing it. I, I was actually doing our, our coordination of yellow. <laughs> yeah, it's quite lovely. So for the challenge, I was actually asked to skip, to jump rope. You know that I cannot skip. Like, I can't skip. I have no Yeah, I think I need to get it checked out. Like, something is wrong with how my brain coordinates skipping. I cannot skip. But if you want to learn how to skip, I'm going to rule the world. In the meantime, you guys, I'm always telling <laughs> Nai and Kathy that, like, you know, with Captain with Christian and stuff, like when he had that little tooth that shaped when he fell and how I was up all night and I googling everything. Cause you know when I have like this one thing and so like you don't know where I do. So everything you did Google and Google tell you all kinds of things. Google what is guess the what? worst thing that we have Google our own version that you can do. When you're in because Google tells you it starts from the worst. It starts yeah. from don't go to sleep tonight. Don't go to sleep at all. To <laughs> I think he'll be fine down at the bottom. Yeah. Well, anyway, we have a our own, own pediatrics for parents books that was written by one of our renowned pediatricians, Dr. John Royce. Now, if you know Dr. Royce, he is wanting hilarious. Yes. He does not make you take your self-care issues too seriously. And what he does in very Jamaican, very simple language that parents can understand, he goes through just that about everything maybe gripes colic cast eye apparently there's no such thing as cold in your mole who knew that because you're not supposed to carry children out because they won't catch cold in their mole i think i still grandparents that 
So those things I was like, Dr. Rice, I'm not so sure about. And my grandmother so used to you support, this. She used to pour the white rum in my bowl if I went out, if I got wet in the rain. Yeah. So we'd end up just, first of all, we'd just pass out and go straight to sleep because we are dripping in white rum. <laughs> <laughs> so we just sleep right after. <laughs> We're especially of lots of those myths um the chapter on constipation is actually called a real pain in the arse <laughs> <laughs> so he gives That's advice true. on everything you know sometimes children have a big navel he talks about how you deal with that so it dispels lots of our myths mm -hmm. but it, it really addresses so many of our concerns as parents it's like a nice like a bedside bible to make mm -hmm. it kind of and go to sleep at night because you recognize that a lot of the things other parents have dealt with is not like your child did ever have it first and there are ways to address it and i mean he, he the language he's hilarious the language is great and it's just so fantastic that we have our own jamaican book it's not like we're saying that you must go get another book from somebody from somewhere else or jamaican yeah. people are just so talented so to um dr john royce and highly recommend to every parent pediatric for parents please go and get it now love it well so i must so talk now it looks yes. like it's gonna be your favorite um <laughs> your friend book russian <laughs> yeah because yeah. you know i have to read about everything because i'm a subject matter expert on just about everything <laughs> so when i finish with this i'm a medical degree yes, but guys you, you know though that tonight um I'm particularly excited because of who our guests are. So I follow a lady named Kamisha Swaby on Instagram. She's one of my Instagram faves, love her. And um, she just happens to be married to one of our most innovative Jamaicans. They're both very young people. And as I go through their bio, you're wondering what exactly you've been doing with their life because they're millennials. They're very young people, like them is very young. They would not have been my friends in high school because <laughs> we wouldn't have gone to high school together. <laughs> so, Kamisha is a lecturer in the Department of Government at the University of West Indies, Mona. She's a consultant and many of you know her as a co-host of Nationwide at Five with Cliff Hughes. She's been working in youth development and leadership for more than 13 years and she extra bright too because you know she's a 2016 she evening scholar and when she completed her ma in social policy from the university of york she graduated as the people them valedictorian this girl from jamaica isn't that delightful That's she's amazing. actually a phd a phd candidate in um phd in public policy okay. candidate at ue and fun fact in 2012 because how old was Jamaica in 2012, Kathy? 15. 50. You never know. Oh, I, I forgot Good where she was. Jamaica 50, that's right. Sorry. So in 2012, <laughs> Kamisha was Miss Jamaica Festival Queen. That's awesome. Isn't that amazing. Yes. <laughs> So she is actually a new mother, and as I mentioned, she's married to our other guest, a very well-known gentleman, Gordon Swaby, who is founder and CEO of Social Learning Service, edufocal.com. At a very tender little age of 14, he created his first major website. I was putting up posters on my wall, and he was creating a website. At 15, he created perhaps... <laughs> the largest gaming website in the English-speaking Caribbean, the now defunct advancedgamers.com. He's won multiple awards and accolades. So you've seen him as PSOJ 50 Under 50 awardee. He has been a Governor General Youth Achievement Award, a Branson Center Entrepreneurship inductee, one long list of things. And these people are some young people. So tonight we get an opportunity to sit with Kamisha, Gordon and Kamisha, Maybe. And we're going to delve a little bit and just find out how we can be motivated. And we too can be valedictorians. Gordon and Kamisha, welcome. 
We are super, super excited to have you here at Emerge Detour Essentials. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, I, we, I, feel, I, we feel extra, extra special because we did see Gordon's tweet earlier oh, about the fact that, you know, he's, you have been asked to do many interviews. <laughs> and not sure how Kathy swung this one, but we are grateful that you chose to spend more time with us. <laughs> happy to join and it's so funny um i know and i'm happy to hear of the importance of the yellow but yellow is actually my favorite color and i was going to put on yellow and i said you know let me put on black we can't do really so yes yellow is my favorite color so happy awesome so we're representing many things tonight then with the yellow today yes so guys again we're so happy to have you right and um but we, we, we heard those lovely introductions and it's really, really impressive to have such, as Rochelle said, young people, millennials that are driving so much important things yeah. in this world, in Jamaica right now that have impact. And so you are both very, very accomplished. I mean, Kamisha, you do everything. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm going uh, to add a moment to the portfolio. Right. I know. Right, and our parents as well, which we'll get to in a little bit. Yes. But I want to start first with Gordon. So, Gordon, I want you to tell us a little bit about the Edu Focal journey. We heard in the, the, what Rochelle had mentioned that you had actually created your first website at 14 and then you created the largest gaming platform. Um, so, but now you're now in focus a lot on education. You both also include the youth in the work that you're doing. But I'd definitely love to hear, how did this Edifocal journey begin? All right, so thanks again, guys, for having us, Kathy, Naomi, and Rochelle. We appreciate it. Um, I think this is our first time, as in Kimi Shanae's first time speaking together. Um, second. second time, <laughs> we met once, um, so it's very rare. Um, we usually, you know, as, as Kathy mentioned before, uh, we, we just don't do it. So this is new for us. Um, but yeah, so the Edufocal journey, I started a company in 2012 with my uh, friend, Paul Allen. It, it started with me at UTech, right? So I was at UTech and when I was around, I'd say maybe about 13, 14 years old, um, I created this thing called my life wireframe and my life wireframe was essentially a number of things that I, I guess it's the modern day equivalent of a vision board. Right? Mm. How about vision board back then? Um, so it, 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 it was a wireframe and I basically plotted out all of the things that I wanted to accomplish um, in, a, in, a, in a particular period of time. I know that I'm actually here talking to you about it. I remember putting an asterisk beside one of the things. I don't remember which one. And I said, uh, marriage and kids may offset some of these goals. <laughs> Uh, yes. uh, so here, here I am in 2020 with, with a child and I'm married and uh, I I wouldn't say that it's, I mean, now that I'm a little bit older and more mature, I, I wouldn't use the word offset or delay. Uh, you know, sometimes life carries us along a path that, you know, we may not necessarily have, we may not have anticipated it carrying us along that path, but it is joy, you know, it's, it's such a great um, an exciting journey, and that is the journey I'm on now. So I created this wireframe. One of the things that was on that wireframe was me starting a company before graduating from university. I didn't graduate. I decided to drop out um, mm -hmm. blood all the time. Not to say that, not to encourage other young people to drop out at university. Uh, you know, I was studying computer science at UTech, and in 2013, I was think I think I was going into my second year. Um, we we had a seed investment. Um, it was 13,000 US dollars. Um, and I went to my father and I said, Daddy, you know what? Edufocal and Edufocal and school is suffering. I think I need to take a break from one of them. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to be school. And he said, surprisingly, said to me, Go ahead, Gordon, take that break. And I'm like, Wow, I was shocked. I, I, I still remember it was, it was during the summer 2013 that I made that decision. And I remember taking a break from school and feeling like a bum because one i realized that a lot of time was freed up i didn't have to mentally focus on yeah 
school work anymore and, and you know i had the opportunity to focus fully on edifocal but it turns out it was a great decision and so you know it started at edifocal it started with just we started with csec actually we started with uh test prep questions for the csec exam mm -hmm. it wasn't working out. don't want to go into all of the details but the csec side of it wasn't working out i was in bed one day and i said boy it's not working you know i need to try something else and i decided to launch the gsat portion of the site and uh novia mcdonald white plays a huge part in this story because i was we we, we had issues with getting content and we were all over i was all over the place trying to get content Nobody would take me on. And then one morning I got a call from Nova McDonald White, woke me up out of my bed. You know how she is already. <laughs> she was like, Do you know who I am? <laughs> so I'm like, Yeah, because I wasn't all that, you know, I wasn't excited because I just woke up. I was tired, you know. Um, anyway, look, to cut a long story short, um, we had we got a we signed a, a, a partnership with the Jamaica Observer that you know was really, really beneficial um for us. I really give Nova McDonald White, Adam Stewart, and um, Danville Walker, and others in, at the Observer, you know, big kudos for helping me to get started, helping us to get started. Uh, you know, as I said, it's a long story, but I don't want to go into all of the details right now. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the synopsis of how we got started um, with Edifocal. So, tell us exactly what Edifocal is. So, Edifocal started out as a test prep service for GSAT and CSEC students. Uh, we started in 2012. We've now transitioned to a full-time school, you know. So we literally offer full-day classes every day from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we have 10 full-time teachers, and we cover all of the, the, the PEP subject areas. We we use this concept called gamification to make learning fun. So yeah. kids can log on to the platform. They can answer questions. Um, they can watch videos. They can earn points, and they're, level, they're leveling up, just like how you would level up in a video game, and they're competing yeah. with students. Uh, you know, on, on a leaderboard. And every year we give away, I think, we didn't do it this year because of COVID, but every year we give away $50,000 cash to our top student on the every focal platform. And yeah, we've been doing, we, we've been on doing it. The GSAT and CSEC on, the, yeah, on both the GSAT okay. and CSEC side. But obviously since we no longer have CSEC, we're not doing it on that side. But yeah, we've been doing this since 2012 and it's been a great journey. Uh, 2020 has been a huge year for us. I remember, yes. I remember at the beginning of COVID, um, you know, again, a, a whole story by itself, you know, there were many days that Kemisha was annoyed with me for being stuck in this very office, um, but I was deep in it trying to do our best to respond to COVID. I mean, in, 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 in one week, we had maybe 20, 30, 20 to 30,000 kids on the Edifocal platform. We, you know, we rolled out full classes. It was, it was a crazy time. I'm happy things have kind of slowed down now. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's Edifocal. Well, well, well. One of the things that's very exciting is that you you rolled out this Pep Academy, right? So I'd love to hear more about that. Is it? I know it's definitely the first of its kind in Jamaica. Is it the first of its kind in the region as well? I definitely think so. I mean, I haven't heard of anything else like it in the region, to be honest with you. Um, we have a lot. We have big dreams and ambitions for Edifocal Pep Academy. So for example, next year when kids are sitting the the Pep exam, what we'll do is that we'll rent a facility. Um, and they can actually sit the PEP exam in that facility. So they'll be doing the exam under the, the, the name Edifocal PEP Academy. And, yeah. you know, I, you know I, was tweeting other that, I was tweeting the other day that I have plans to enter our kids into Junior Schools Challenge Quiz, um, Sports oh, Days, and it's, yes. it's a lot of these kids have, are getting closer now on the platform. Yes. Um, so the teachers have the classes, every day. all of the classes are recorded and uploaded to the platform. And sometimes I'll go back and I'll watch some of the videos. And these are kids who've never met each other before. They're yeah. getting over on the platform. They're messaging each other. So it really is revolutionary. And we're happy that we're in a position to, to rule this out. Yeah. This is, this is so exciting, especially because, as you said, 2020 kind of threw everybody for a loop. We're still looping yeah. right now. And some people really are still stuck. So yeah. it's really yeah. amazing that you were able to, one, have so many people onto your network and for you to be able to even operate um, yeah. during the beginning of this pandemic and yeah. now to merge into something as big as your own online academy, yeah. um, especially as people are now getting more comfortable yeah. with online learning, which may have been something they wouldn't be so willing to try six months ago. Absolutely. I remember, I remember just being stressed out because 
you know, we understood that a lot of people were losing their jobs and the ministry, you know, the Ministry of Education called us, the permanent secretary called me and she's like, um, can you make your platform free? And, you know, we had a lot of sales tied up in schools and schools were closed. So we couldn't, there, a lot of money, there was a lot of money that we couldn't collect. Right. You know, for me to be getting a call to make the service free, I'm like, wow. But in response, you know, I started as just us giving back and we made the service yeah. free for one month. We had a lot of uptake. And then the second month came around, I'm like, wow, we really can't keep this free. So I started asking around for sponsorship for, for, for companies to just sponsor access to the platform. Um, I got a lot of no's, but then I, 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 you know, took up the phone. I called William my food, and William was like, "Gordon, we'll support you." I'm like, "This is great! All right, do it." Um, and that was the start of many other companies coming on board to support us. You know, national NCB yeah. companies coming Magic on board Core to support Foundation. us. Foundation. In fact, there yeah. are some companies that he didn't have to call; they called him to yeah. say, yeah. "How can we support that?" Yeah. It was so, great for me to see that. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's that absolutely is amazing. Um, one of the things I wanted to know is that I, well, I mean, maybe this is not your story, but I know, especially hearing young people trying new things, especially things that have never really been done before, especially right here in Jamaica. Um, have you ever experienced any type, type of like detractors or people who didn't believe in what you are doing? And if so, how did you handle that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, people can be condescending in very subtle ways. Um, and sometimes they may not even realize that they're being condescending, right? Yeah. So I would get questions. So I started a focal, as I mentioned um, before, at 21. And I remember people saying, some people saying to me, so how's your project? How's your project going? And I'm like, it's not a project. It's an actual company. It's a registered <laughs> company. It's a limited liability company. You know, it's a real thing. It's a real business. Yeah. And I mean, remember, you know, we may not remember this, but this was back in, this was back in 2012 when, an online business in Jamaica was not seen as a real business, right? Absolutely. And you know, so here we are, you know, almost nine years later with with almost 30 employees and we continue to grow. And I, you know, I really give God thanks for the for the you know for the opportunities that you know that I've received. The biggest opportunity, I'd say the biggest win for me is, is my wife. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm serious, you know? um, you see, she's blushing. But no, seriously, my you know, Kemisha has transformed my life so much. Um, she she has centered me, and uh, you know, I really, really, really give thanks for her. I'm happy to have her by my side now. Um, and you know, so definitely, it's it's been such a great journey, and she's contributed so much um, to my life. And here we know we have a son, and you know, I'm excited about the next chapter for us. I love that. Yeah. Awesome, guys. Awesome. So, can you show your brother is on and he says, he's <laughs> he is. <laughs> Hi, John, and hello to all the coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> and an Auntie Inez is watching from New York as well. Hi, Aunt Inez. <laughs> and Uncle Barry is yet there in oh, New York. But, <laughs> <Love it. laughs> Jodian says you two are the epitome of a power couple, and we. Yeah. That, that's so you know just re, that's so I said to you that's so weird for us because we don't <laughs> we don't see ourselves you know we don't see ourselves as a power couple. Kemisha is from Saint Anne, um, I'm from Manchester. We're just two country people who move things <laughs> done. I mean, we live our we live our, our regular private life. Um, this fine turn on social media. Yeah, like that. yeah, like I don't put maybe night. Uh, Maybe five percent of my life is out there. I, I and worse, Kemisha. Kemisha is even more private than me. Kemisha's had a, a private Instagram profile for years, right? Um, but yeah, we're we're very. I'd say we're relatively private people. We we don't put pictures of our son out there. His name is not out there. And I he's think entrepreneur Swaby. Yeah, so his nickname his nickname <laughs> is entrepreneur Swaby. We don't know his name. You know, I've already bought his. Name. So he has his domain name secured. His email. Oh my gosh. Domain secured. Yeah. So I've I've owned GordonSwaby.com since I was 16 years old, and I'm now 29. So, yeah, like I think it's important for him to reserve. It's absolutely, like, important. I mean, you understand the importance of branding. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, Naomi, Rochelle, Cafe, yeah, yeah. this is your space. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So his name is locked down, secured. When he's ready for it, I will hand it over. And you won't have to buy it back from somebody else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And and before we got married, he bought <laughs> com. Just oh my gosh! Yeah. Remember, you know, 
I knew we were going to get married long before we actually got married. Right. So I, I locked that down. Um, yeah. I love it. <laughs> the power of a brand, because I have to think to remember Kamisha's made more, right? So <laughs> you, you, you're, you're doing some work. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, we, we, we actually, you we actually had an agreement around that. Yes, that had to be negotiated very early on. Yeah, yeah we negotiated the last name thing. Yes. Oh. As I would have already done so much in my own life um, yeah. as Kamisha Kelly. And, um, some, some women don't change and that's their prerogative. Some women double barrel, that's their prerogative. And some women change their last name. Um, we, had, we had long discussions back and forth about him. But I think ultimately, I... Um, family is one of my core values. I'll say that. And having both of us are raised, we're raised in families where our parents are, are, have now been married for over thirty years. And so, our parents who are doing great things had no problem changing their name. And I was like, you know, I don't feel like it would be taking away anything from me. So I would change the swaybe. And Gordon knows that I was actually quite finicky about ensuring that for the birth certificate yeah. it had me as Swaby and him as Swaby. So it's a little strange value that you have for yourself. Um yeah. but it's just your own little thing. And I respect any woman's right to keep her maiden name if she wants, to hyphenate. Even if, if her husband wants to take her name, so that's their business. That mm -hmm. whatever you yeah. want to do, you create the space that works for you. Yeah. Yeah. This okay. way it's it you. Yeah, it's <laughs> I think so too. Thank you. Like, it's like, oh, yeah. it, has it has a bond. It feels nice. It has a bond. We are so great, Gordon. I think you have validated the the comments about both of you being the epitome of a power couple because you both are excel within your own space and you have your own identities. And so together, that union. I mean, Gordon said it earlier. You know you compliment him, which is a beautiful thing. The support of, of, of a powerful woman like you. I mean, that's something that he has to embrace. So Kamisha, you have been a youth leader for quite some time, and you just spoke about your core values. Tell us some of the qualities that you believe a leader needs to possess. Uh, there are many ways in which people lead. And I think one of the most important things when we try to define a leader is that there is at least one person that's looking to that person, to that leader, for some kind of guidance, for inspiration, or so on. And so when I talk to other young people, I always um, say to them, you never know who is looking at you because in your community, there are people who are respecting you and are looking at you, for an example. That makes you a leader. So, but when you think in the context, of organizations in the context of business um in the context of positive influence for me a leader is someone who must first accept their responsibility um, to lead uh, a leader must be committed to particular values for themselves and a leader is someone who is willing to step out be different and stand whether at the front to bring others along or at the back to push them ahead. Oh, um, I know that. For me, leadership over the years has taken different forms and I have learned that in leadership, you also have to have your own boundaries. There's a lot of knowledge of self that is important when you think of being a leader. And leadership is not a static thing. You don't just see yourself as, oh, I'm a leader and that's it today. You must continue to change it well, you must continue to emerge <laughs> because there is not a there's no finality until death, in my opinion. So grow definitely what you are constantly pursuing. And so your leadership can continue to change and develop and so on. Leaders also have to accept responsibility. Leaders have to uh I think especially in the context of of living in a pandemic, leaders have to know when they put themselves first and know when they're, they're, they they need to pause. They need to take care of their mental health, their physical health, their spiritual health. And that way they can be able to pour into others. I fully embrace the idea that for leaders, you cannot pour from an empty cup. And so yeah. you 
be taking the time to recharge. You must be taking the time to look after yourself, and then you can give to others. Yeah, yeah. So, leadership too. I think it's selfless, and I like leadership that's inspirational. Yes, absolutely. Love that. So you, you have inspire with fans. Inspire. It's Rochelle. As Rochelle to repeat. Oh, what did you say? I didn't hear that. You, you broke up for a bit. She's inspired also. She's very, very inspirational leader. I was yes, like, yes. I would have voted for Kemisha. I would have voted for Kemisha. <laughs> oh, I get that a lot. <laughs> so, so you are in um, a very influential space in, in every area that you work in between media, lecturing, how do, what do you think are um, the leadership qualities that you've learned or developed about yourself or with yourself over time that you think has one changed? How have they changed? And um, what has caused that change to happen? Okay, okay. So um, perhaps the person who can most tell you how much I enjoy being a lecturer is Gordon. I get very excited about preparing for my classes. I get like super excited um i don't know why but javon <laughs> <laughs> um, james says hands down best lecturer oh hi javon <laughs> yes javon is one of my great students mm -hmm. um i i think that apart so so as a leader in the classroom then one of the first things i have to do is to be prepared um that is essential you have to know your stuff if you're going to be a leader in that space but you also have to be open to learning because as the leader it doesn't mean that you have the monopoly on knowledge and i have fully embraced that my students any co-workers any colleagues they have something to teach me as well mm -hmm. and i'm always very open to that in fact i create spaces in my classroom for students to share openly to bring there's something that I created for my class called In IR News This Week. At the start of the lecture, the students themselves will have to tell me something that's happening in international relations. And once we have covered theories and so on, they have to link back to the theory because the practice of analysis must be done. Mm -hmm. I've also learned, um, Kathy, that leadership requires boundaries. And you asked me how I've learned that. I feel like there's a point in my life where I said yes a lot um, to requests of me and that meant that there were moments where I didn't have time for myself it meant that there were moments where I was missing deadlines it meant that I just was not able to lead fully and mm -hmm. so I have learned to honor the difficult and sometimes the difficulties knowing when I have to say no I need to pause I need to take a break and say I can't do this I'm not going to accept this I need to pull back um I also mentioned that for me leadership is to be inspirational. I, my students, like Javon, will, will tell you that I try to always keep my energy up. Leadership for me is about service. And whenever I enter the classroom, I have to be cognizant of the fact that no matter what had been happening outside, um, when I go into the classroom, I have a duty to deliver. And so I go there with my all. And if I feel like I'm not going to be able to deliver properly, I can step away from stuff. That, that's one, Gordon knows that. I will be like, no, I'm not gonna be able to do this well, so I'm yeah. not gonna want to continue to do it. Um, and so I've said that yeah. it's inspirational, being prepared, knowing when to step away. I would say that's a fourth thing. Because it requires honesty. Um, you can't, there are a lot of things that you just can't fake. And, People are not idiots. They know when you're being authentic, and that's a kind of honesty that I'm talking about, the honesty about who you are, the honesty with yourself, and the clarity of purpose that you bring to the table. When, uh, and knowing what you're about. So for me, mm -hmm. those are some things I've learned as a leader over the years. Um, if I think back to even from the youth leadership space, one of the things that I've always challenged myself to do, and then I encourage other young people that I work with to do, is wherever you go, leave a mark, right? Mm -hmm. Always try to make a positive mark. 
um, sometimes the reality is that things will happen. You might fail, you might disappoint yourself and disappoint someone that you work with. But again, you go back to the honesty of saying, look, I made a mistake, so accepting responsibility. And how can we go forward? So, as a leader, I've accepted that I don't know everything. I will make mistakes. People are going to be disappointed. But the most important thing at the end of the day is I need to be comfortable with myself. I need to be able to come home and talk to Gordon and say, boy, you know, look at this. And be open to his feedback and open mm -hmm. to grow. There are, there's a quote I love from Brittany Brown, which says, I don't love anything that's um, blunt. So like when people tell you that, you know, they're giving you blunt honesty and so on. It doesn't have to be like that because <laughs> even as a leader, it, it, it should be constructive. It should be development if someone is critiquing you. And so I've learned over the years to ignore a lot of things that are just intended to be harsh mm -hmm. and about growth because leaders are people who will make mistakes because they're fallible but the leader themselves has to be open to critique not criticism and be mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to just add a little bit um to what Kimisha said or rather just to contextualize um i mean i lead a team and i remember i used to be i think i used to be very abrasive yes i, I think maybe i still <laughs> am in a lot of ways um, but I do think that she has tempered me a lot. I mean, I used to be very aggressive, right? Um, and she has spent a lot of time just kind of, you know, teaching me to be more empathetic, understanding people's needs, meeting them where they are. Um, and, you know, for a long time, I, I thought that I got too soft. And maybe I did. I think I'm getting back into a little bit more aggressive mode now. Um, but certainly, she, she has had such a huge impact on on me and how i lead and yeah like it's it's, it's been great um but you know she she really does live what she you know like what, what she preaches um mm -hmm. and, and but that's, i i am grateful um and she serves as, as such a great example for me and how i lead yeah. Yeah. can i add to that i mean Gordon has flagged up something that i should have added leadership is about people if people are following you and listening to you it's really and truly about people and if you're not concerned about yeah. Being empathetic and understanding that people are living lives with so many things that they have to put into their own jar, so many issues that they have to face, then you will just be abrasive and you'll be blunt and you'll be harsh and brutal. Uh, that's a quote from Brene, not lacking anything that is brutal, like we want to be brutal honesty. No, you don't need to be brutal. You yeah. can be brutal. And I will tell you that there's one of Gordon's employees online and he says that you have gotten much better at it, Gordon. So okay, that's good. Cool. Last year is one of our favorites. I remember that we said that better. My lad. So here's a fun fact from your brother. He oh. said that Kamisha was reading college level when she was in grade three. She wanted books. <laughs> so, sorry. So, I, just even within that. Um, so, first and foremost, I'm actually so surprised how prepared Kemisha was to be a mother. Like <laughs> every day she just draws for something and I'm like, whoa, babe, when did you get that? I'm like, why did you think about that? Like, I didn't even think we would have needed that. Um, so every day, every day she takes her son to school. Uh, so she has a little play mat and she knows all of this stuff about black and white and how important it is. Wow. I, I don't even know what it is, but I just know that <laughs> it's, she's teaching him, man. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if our, our child is reading and writing long before. Um, most kids do because she takes her role as teacher of our child very seriously. Like, I mean, if it was up to me, I wouldn't be doing anything with him in the days. He would just be sleeping on big bed. And that's that. So and that would probably be good. But you know what? Um, as I said, family is one of my core values, and yeah, it means that for years I've looked forward to being a mother. Um, Rochelle, you said, we're, you know, we're connected on Instagram. Anybody who's friends with me on Instagram knows that my goddaughter has been my pride and joy forever. Yeah. I mean, for the, all of her young life, but I know. Yeah. Um, and so that was my sort of foray into Mother. full motherhood. <laughs> and I, my friends who became godparents after that always said to me, look, we have to take your example because we've never seen anybody take this godmother role as seriously. And it's about that preparation that I talked about. And I really love my godmother, Adriel. Um, a lot of my desire to be a good mother as well has come from my own mother. I mean, 
if I talk a lot about the sacrifices that she has made and her own story, I might end up crying and I don't want to do that. But the reading thing was really because of mommy and, and, and to, to, to a lesser extent, daddy, because daddy was away more than mommy. Mommy was in the house most of the time. Mm -hmm. and we were not able to afford toys. And, uh, you know, so a lot of the luxuries, as John would have said, you know, we, we didn't get, we got books. Well, I got books. I, I, I read a lot. Um, and so bad, that, and, and, and friends then, when I went to primary school, um, like Ayana Morgan and her mom, Mrs. Morgan, who taught at the school, they also gave me books. My aunts would buy me books. So it meant that by the time I got to grade three, and I think we had to do a, a reading diagnostic test, in grade three, when my assessment was done, I was reading at college level. Um, Gordon always says that he was very surprised at how I could sit and read for long stretches of time because he has a short attention span. <laughs> <laughs> very short. Sure. And, and, and that is what opened up opportunities for me. So I might add then that when we think about the practice of leadership and preparation, I think reading must be a fundamental part of that because of how much i read it meant that i was able to enter many spaces which would otherwise have been closed off to me because mm -hmm. of my background the background includes having a mother who had to stop going to school at 12. right um I, I i speak very very plainly about who my parents are my mother was a janitor my father um and and and, and when she was not a janitor at the bank she was a domestic helper Thankfully, she worked for great families, you know? And mm -hmm. her father um, was a taxi driver. He, 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 he picked apples in Canada. That is why he was away. But my father was, was pragmatic. He built his house from the money that he earned. He was not a, a person who was squandering whatever he got. And family was always important to them. But my mother made sure that my brother and I went to school. It was very important for her because she saw education as being so very important. So when I say spaces that were not meant for me, as a daughter of children, uh, as a daughter of parents from those professions, you know, it might ha not have been for me, but reading opened the doors, reading allowed me to be able to have conversations with many, many people. And I remember that regardless of where she was from, my mother would always take the Dino I would say maybe by the time I was nine or so, and she would have me on the veranda, and she would say to me, okay, read it like you're reading news. And so I would you know, study myself and all of that. And so the public speaking posture developed from doing that. Wow. wow. Yeah, so mm -hmm. when, when I take seriously whatever I do with our son now, I just want to start him early yeah. um, to give him the best option. Yeah. yeah, you know, I always say to Kim that in a lot of ways, my life contrasts hers because I mean, I grew up in a pretty like I was not wanting for anything growing up. I mean, I was we were pretty good, but I I was a I got a troubled child, um, a challenging child, challenging child. <laughs> yeah, let's be let's be yeah, it was euphemism, um, but. Like Kimmy, I've always had a great appetite for reading and writing. I love writing. Um, in fact, one of my one of my big ambitions in life was to actually write for the Gleaner, which I accomplished. And you know that that for me gave me the kind of confidence I needed to pursue other things in life. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I had challenges. My appreciation for reading came from having challenges with learning how to read. Um, in fact, not only did I have issues learning how to read. I had issues learning how to tie my shoes lace. I had issues differentiating between the short hand and the long hand on a clock. Between left and right. Between left and right. It was only later in my life that I realized that I may be dyslexic, right? Mm. I actually went to a doctor about it last year. I was a psychiatrist and he I didn't go through the long tedious testing of it, just based on the questions that he asked. The preliminary assessment. The preliminary assessment. Mm. And he confirmed that, right? Um so for me, I remember struggling to read and when I started to get better at it, I remember still it just stands out in my head to this day. I remember being in a vehicle, seeing the billboards and knowing how to read them. It was the most exciting thing for me. Like yeah, so, so people take it for granted, right? The ability to, yes. 
the ability to read and comprehend like it's yeah. it's you can literally unlock anything you want in life uh, you know i said to people all the time think about it you can get up tomorrow morning and dedicate yourself to learning something new all you need is the patience and the ability to to, to, to research and, and get information you need and you can achieve it and, and it takes time but it is possible and for me that is such a beautiful thing and that is why i've always been doing that nothing is beyond me um you know and i, I you know i cannot I, I i set my mind to. so yeah. And he reads voraciously now. Yeah. Um, we just bought like 30 books today from, <laughs> from, Bookland. from Bookland. Yeah, yeah, Bookland is having a sale. Oh, yes. Yeah, I've heard about oh. that. I need to go. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like really, yes. really nice. I'm also a voracious reader yeah. as well. So I love books. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're all readers. We actually, yeah. think we normally assign a book at the end of the session. And we do, I all, do, uh, do a trip to Bookland. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's three it's three floors of books. So dress comfortably. So you yeah, you don't you won't have any issue with social yeah. distancing. Uh, well, I, re I remember it because when I used to work at RETV, I used to walk to, RETV used to be in New Kingston and I used to walk to that bookstore all the time. Mm. I know it's lovely. Yeah, it was my first time here today. That people don't know about. Yeah, I've never yeah. been to Bookland. It's been. awesome. Yeah, man, it was my first time here. Yeah, really experience. Yeah. So you two talked about the impact that you've had on each other's lives. Um, so I gather from that, and you spoke about your parents and the impact that your parents have had on you. So, how important is mentorship for both of you, and who are your mentors? Um, I, I mean, I've had many mentors in my life. Uh, I, I don't think that mentorship for me has to be organic. You, you can't just artificially match people together, right? No, because you're not matched with somebody means that they're a bad person or you're a bad person. You just don't have that, you know, you don't have that connection. And that's fine. You have to kind of go and search and it happens organically. Um, for me, I've had many mentors in my life. I'd say that my, my biggest mentors are my parents. Um, you know, I, they serve as such great examples for me and how I should live my life. Um, you know, but if, if I was to think about anybody else right off the top of my head, my, my chairman, Peter Levy, um, managing director at BCFC, has been such a great mentor to me um, for such a long time. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to have people like him in my life. So definitely it, it is important to have mentors and I have benefited a lot from it. But I would say don't force it. It has to be natural, um, mm -hmm. patient, and, you know, in time you will find. And for me, by the way, a mentor doesn't necessarily need to be somebody that you know. Um, I do believe that you can get mentored from a distance by just observing yes. people and mm -hmm. the things that you do. Yes. Um, so, you know, the beautiful thing about the internet, the internet has allowed us to get access to people that we would not have um, otherwise had access to, say, mm -hmm. 30 or 40 years ago. So, for, you know, for that, I'm also grateful. Um, yeah. Um, for me, in terms of mentorship, I have not had any one direct person that has been holding my hand and guiding me through life. Um, however, I have taken a lot of support from other women um, who have been willing to take me under their wing and give me lessons in particular things, and those have all been useful. I want to specifically mention Marcia Forbes. I remember when she's the first person I actually asked to be a mentor to me, and it's because I would have learned about her life in public service. So it's not that... GM of TVJ and all of that. It's actually more her ability to transition, yeah. having done nursing and then moved on to managing the family business, being a permanent secretary. That for me was just mind blowing. That she was be able to do so many things. Um, mm -hmm. I, God knows that I'm not somebody who's like big on celebrities, but I have huge love for Michelle Obama. <laughs> We all do. Yes. She would have invited her on tonight so that you could see her, you know? For sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then um I I I take a lot of lessons from even quietly observing persons. So my teachers, um my I think of 
when I was in high school, especially my principal, this, um, the, last, the now my, this is at St. Hilda's, by the way. So my principal, mm -hmm. Hillary Johnson, the, uh, the now vice principal, Miss Angel Brown, and my biology teacher, um, Mrs. Stewart. Now, why are they mentors? They are women who, in my opinion, took seriously my growth and the growth of other young mm -hmm. women. Um, I remember they, they opened opportunities for me um, and just gave me a space to thrive and grow and they would always drop in a word to say, okay, make sure you do this and so on. I can think of one thing in particular. So of course, you know, mommy and daddy taught me to use knife and fork at home. However, we were going, we, the, the young ladies at St. Hilda's, we were going to the United Nations on a trip. It was the UN International Schools Conference. And so the mrs johnson brought all the young ladies who would be attending and we had to sit in um a, a room that was adjacent to her office to do formal dining because we were not going to go and embarrass our school with the slightest thing so <laughs> even little things like look you go to dinner you've tasted something that you don't like look whatever is in your mouth it goes down and you just don't have any more that's it because you're yeah. not going to go you know, and you know, those little opportunities have created spaces for me to grow as well. And that for me is a sort of mentorship. And I do a lot of reading. And so now the mentorship comes from authors like Renee Brown, especially um, her writings on boundaries, Angela Duckworth on grit, that is an extreme. Mm -hmm. And finally, in terms of mentorship, I, I think too from friends. You know, being able to sit with my friends um, and talk about what you do, how do you thrive, how do you give service, and there's a sort of what do you call it? It's some sort of osmosis and the sort of mentorship that takes place in the friendships. Mm -hmm. You know, Crystal and the commitment that she has to time management. So this is Crystal mm -hmm. Tomlinson and the passion for service. Rasheen Robinson. When it comes on to mummying, like Rasheen would have been my go-to, and Gordon will always do that. She has so much experience because she has three children. Okay, <laughs> so, so Rasheen, you know, um, and I can all, you know, there are other friends as well. Oh, Ali, Ali Matalon, like Ali is my sharpshooter friend. Like I don't know how she keeps the energy um, to do all the amazing things that she's doing. And over the years, other friends, you know, there's a lot of learning that has taken place from all of mm -hmm. them that they yeah. challenge me in whatever I'm doing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, Kamisha, you went to St. Hilda's because I can hear St. Hilda's, you know, you can know this is the ladies of St. Hilda's. <laughs> <laughs> I did, yes. Yes, they're, they're not coarse, they're smooth, the ladies yeah. of St. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you come from Manchester? Which school you went to? So I went to Knox College and Homewood Technical. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. I yeah. also have home already six from at St. Jago, Rochelle. It would be remiss of me, and all my St. Jago friends would be most displeased. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I did think oh, so oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was definitely a girl at St. Jago. Yes. Not surprising at all. So you know, um, as as both of you were speaking and spoke so much about the influence of your parents, and it's just so it's fantastic to see the influence of your own parents in your and uh, congratulations again on being new parents. What has surprised you most about? as a parent. What has surprised you most about? What, what has you? surprised you most about yourself in this role as a parent? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <Woo>. uh, wow. <laughs> I... Oh, wait, I have one. I have one. Right. What has surprised <laughs> me the most? My ability to do without sleep. I mean, if you know me, you, you have to... Like, let me tell you, before she was pregnant, I remember that I was shocked that you can't really go to sleep unless your child is sleeping. Um, that was shocking to me. I couldn't understand that. It didn't make any sense. 
Um, so I'm most surprised about my inability, my ability to function without a lot of sleep. Trust me, it, it's yeah. and I've adjusted very well to it. I'm so my my I'm my okay, and I have that in my head. Gordon's my special role, it. yeah, man. My special role is diaper changing yes. at, nights. at night. So Kemita will kind of just nudge me. <laughs> Um, babe, can you you know change? Can you change this diaper? And I'm like, all right, give me five minutes. Um, and then I get up and I change it. But I actually like it, and I've gotten used to it. Um, I've gotten used to getting up very early. So I'd say that that's number one for me. That's that's surprised um, me. Oh gosh, it's tough. Um, <laughs> but 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 maybe, hmm. There's a one the preparedness because Gordon has rightly said that I have been prepared. But yeah, she's a prepper. But even but it's still what has surprised me, Rochelle, is how much I don't know. Mm -hmm. Honestly, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how and 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 we're just what six weeks in. <laughs> yeah, we're, six weeks in. we're just six weeks in, and you can read all the books, mm -hmm. and all the things. Yeah, and we're going to just have to learn on the job. Yeah, like one thing I don't know, maybe I don't know. One of the things that you know, Kemisha didn't know is that the you know the child uh, doesn't automatically <clears throat> learn to lash on day one. I mean, oh, yeah. that that for both of us has been such a you know, but you know, he has gotten he's gotten very good at it. He, yeah. he bites <laughs> and he <laughs> lashes now, um, and yeah, that. <laughs> Like, no, seriously. Um, that was rough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, nobody tells yeah. you that not something that's automatic. So it's only once you have the child and you realize that this this is a challenge that you hear so many other stories. Yes, about, that's just crazy to me. Yeah. But it took us about a week to learn, <laughs> and it was it was very hard. But every day you learn something new. So like today, for example, he wouldn't stop crying. He they basically cried all day um and they you know it's 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 just great because you you get used to a certain routine and then he changes yeah. and you're like oh damn um <laughs> so yeah it can be it can be frustrating but certainly you know it, it you get better at it and you adjust where, where where necessary yeah and i think if i think i love the question rochelle so that has another mm -hmm. take another kind of reflection i think what i've learned about us is that we're a really good team yes yeah. we're I, a really good team and I, um oh, right. so sometimes i have to just touch his leg when he's gonna cut me off so that's that's the routine <laughs> but <laughs> um the other day i because i'm trying to get back into work and i must be honest it's very very hard like it, it feels overwhelming to be caring for baby and still just even getting into the mental space to be effective at other yeah, tasks yeah. and mm -hmm. gordon was talking about you know, I asked him how was his day, and he was telling me how it was very productive, and he feels good about stuff. Good Friday afternoon, outside looks great. And then he asked me how was your day, and said, oh, you know, I'm not feeling so good because my day was not productive. There are no more things that I saw that I felt good, and I didn't get mm -hmm. And he looked at me, and he said, no, don't say that. You took care of the baby all day, and you were productive with that. And that sort of affirmation was really big on the day um we do make just a different kind of work yes yes and him seeing it as very important was really important for me and we mm -hmm. we really work well together and i and i like that even while i will have my eyes on taking care of baby i know i still have someone watching my back and helping to take care of me and so it, that has also been a good lesson Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add a point to that. I actually realized that I'm more involved than a lot of dads. I thought the way I operate is pretty standard, um, but I realized that. So, like, I mean, I, I'm an all rounder kind of guy. I will cook, clean, um, wipe floors, and I can do all of them very well. I can make the clothes have that little sound. <laughs> I mean, I'm very, very domesticated. That's, that's a skill, you know. No, that's 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 not, you know, I'm very domesticated. I enjoy domestic tasks, um, which a lot of people may not know. Um, I love my favorite thing is cooking. It's very ther therapeutic and for me. So there's a war for the kids. Yeah, man. So. Yeah, man. Um, so I'm not good at what you consider very quote unquote stereotypical meal stuff. So I can't fix cars. I'm not big on cars. So like some of the things that I bought today at Bookland, you know, 
I love Asian cuisine, right? So I love cooking Chinese food. Um, mm-hmm. about you know, mm-hmm. cookbooks. Those are the things that get me excited. And again, that may be seen as a very mm-hmm. feminine thing, but I don't care what other people think. Right. Um, that's, my, that's my jam. I love that. I'm not a car person. Yeah. I buy nice cars, but yeah. um, and I so when people say There's to me, nothing about fixing that. Yeah, man. So somebody says. <laughs> You know, I bought a new car recently, and somebody asked me about the horsepower. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. We just know says a fast car, right? Um, that's what I wanted to do in traffic. Um, yeah, I will say too that it's really good to have family. Um, our son has four grandparents, and that's amazing. It means that we get help when we ask for help. So my mom has been here with us, but when we went to when we went to Manchester. One parents took our son, and you know what? I got to enjoy a full night's sleep, two nights in a row. And yeah. That yeah. happened in a week. Yeah. And then, so where Gordon doesn't have any of those technical skills, guess what? His brother, his big brother, Jerome, can help us with all that. So, in fact, in right. fact, our son must know in the future that things like setting up the crib and all that. Did not go into his father's hands. But <laughs> Jerome had to come up and yeah. all of the <laughs> so, guys, right now I'm fretting because she asked me to put the bookshelves. But she doesn't know it's actually we're gonna go and come up and sort out the bookshelves because you know man I'm man, I have a few bro. <laughs> we don't really want that, you know. I really I I don't enjoy that kind of stuff. I don't honestly don't do it well. I don't have the patience for it. Um, it's just not my thing. And if you link that back to leadership, it's important to know your zone of genius. Yeah, it's you're not, not my gonna and that's fine. Um, and if you and what if it's not your zone of genius, do not try to to pretend like it is your space and you've got it. You know, some it might work for quite some time because yeah. I remember yeah. Gordon's story about the first time he changed a tire was to avoid embarrassment. Yeah, yeah. Can I share that story? Hold on, let me <laughs> and then yeah. <laughs> The lesson in terms of is that you don't have to try to pretend like you know how to do everything. Stick yeah. to the areas that you are great yeah. at. For me, I, I feel like I'm about to that point. I was about to say I'm about to give up on making the perfect lasagna. It's like I feel like I used to be able to do it and then I'm not getting it, but I cook everything else very well, right? Right, right, and guess, and guess what? Kimisha, there are some amazing people right now that make like the most delicious lasagna, so you can just order one. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> true. As a matter of fact, I'm ordering from, from Pastries by Jan tomorrow, and that's by far the most delicious chicken lasagna I've ever had. Yes. Okay, so, so I'm gonna have to get that link so I can just order from time to time. Yeah. I won't trick Gordon with that time. Let, 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 me, let me quickly share the, the tire story, right? So let me tell you how I learned yeah. So I was in a woman's vehicle. My father asked this lady to drop me to Kingston, right? So highway was around, or highway 2000 was around. And at the start of the highway, she gets, she gets a flat. Now, she's in the vehicle, and again, very stereotypical. She expects me to, you know, she, she thought I knew how to change the tire. Now, I'm in the, I'm in the car, I'm about school straight, but I'm a friend. You don't know how to do it. And, you know, the ego huge. You don't want to be a So I'm like, yeah, man, I know how to change the tire. So I come out of the vehicle, um, and I... I jacked it up, right? I jacked it up. The handbrake wasn't up, so I'm there trying to to, to, to take off the lug nut and the tire spin. Oh my gosh! But I'm like, what the hell? What is this? What is, what is this? I'm so nervous because she's looking at me and she's like, what the hell? This guy doesn't know what he's doing. So yeah, I've come up with So I'm gonna jump back down the vehicle. So the vehicle, the tires on the ground. You know, you loosen up the lug nuts. Um, and then you jack it back up, you take it off, and that, that's that's literally how I learned to change a tire. No, that's not my, my father tried many, many times to teach me um how to change the tire, but I just didn't pay attention. I was busy in the kitchen with my mother learning how to cook. So sometimes you're in a sticky situation, you have to learn on the yeah, fly. Yeah. yeah. So my father different approach. My father said I would not be going on the road without learning to change a tire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to learn to change a tire, and in fact, I know more about cars than Gordon. She probably does. Yeah, I, I do. don't. I don't know more cars. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. And you're okay with that. That's fine. I'm completely okay with yes. that. You know, there's there's a running joke in there about calling the plumber because you know I would always say you know if, if I have a problem I'll just call the plumber. And, you know, it's so funny. It, it, it that played it, out. It became a reality. <laughs> I have a plumber that I call you know for issues, but no, I've learned. I remember when Kimmy was in the UK for a year um, and she was coming back to Jamaica. Uh, 
and I went to Rapid True Valley and I bought a, a, a tool pan and I bought a hammer for the tool pan because man, I lost that learn how to fix things around your house, right? Yeah. And probably <laughs> because it's the first time he has really admitted that he bought the tool pan oh, wow. because I was coming back home. Yeah, no, no, seriously, like, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to know that. I can actually fix stuff around the house. Um, and I've got I've been getting much better. <laughs> I must have... coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's my <point. laughs> That's big brother. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, for me, lessons on leadership come from many, many, many spaces. Absolutely. And I mean, well, we've been having a lot of fun, you know, sharing. I hope people are still taking the little nuggets mm -hmm. about leadership. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. on Friday today. <laughs> <laughs> The whole family, the whole yeah, family. Yeah, 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 really. yeah. Can you, uh, let me ask you a question. Yeah. You are very active on social media, right? And on Instagram, especially, this, you describe yourself as always learning and growing, wife, mom, Christian, friend, godmother, book lover. How do you manage your own online brand? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, um, online originally was just a space I'm going to share with friends and I would share a lot of news articles because again I like to read mm -hmm. so I would share whatever I was reading I would share quotes from books, books and so on I did not take too seriously what the name was online because I was using a nickname from St. Jago that a friend Claudine gave me she called me Kempress and I was using Kempress as my online name for quite some time yes then I met Gordon Swaby, who had a company and had delved into branding back in the day, studied the branding manuals and all that. And he said to me, listen, you can't have this name online, you know, you need to use your real name. And I was like, why? You know, my name is cute. Kempress is nice. And he went, he was very, very serious about it. I did a revamping of her brand. She doesn't want to all right give me the credit. Well, <laughs> We went through and he established for me the importance of having your name out there and just using your real name, unless it's another brand name that you use. And Kempress was not a brand name, and I wasn't going to do anything with it beyond that. So, yeah. so I started changing um, my Instagram and Twitter to using my real name, Kemisha Kelly. No, Kemisha Swaby. Um, I, what I put out online is really me sometimes what i think about i call instagram my happy wall if it's not a happy thing it's not on my happy wall i might share it in stories you know mm -hmm. or so on but instagram for me is a happy wall so i don't mm -hmm. want anybody to feel like it's a lifestyle page yeah um, and it's just me putting out all of these things that i want everybody to see no if it's something that I'm happy about and I want to share it with the people who are there, I share it there. Um, I think that in this digital age, we can't always send, um, like we 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 have our son now, or you, you, even when we're doing our wedding invitations, we did not, um, the, or the save the dates were digital, but people would get invitations afterwards. So I mean, this digital age, it's important to keep connected with persons and you can't always do it in a, slow way yeah so, mm -hmm. instagram is my share my little announcements um and whatever i'm happy about twitter now is a different space for me twitter is engaging in public commentary it's it's giving my ideas about what is mm -hmm. happening in current affairs and still of course connecting with friends sharing opportunities for people connecting and so on of course people have reached out to me on other platforms to be able to connect and share opportunities and so on like people have reached out to me to help them with achieving scholarship applications through um instagram and twitter and one will tell you i absolutely enjoy helping people to do that mm -hmm. um and so i make what i share authentically me i mean there if you see me do something online what i would you would you would actually catch me doing it you're the same person i'm the same person there's mm -hmm. no there's no mincing up. Of course, I'm I'm not 
I mean, especially now that I've just had a son, honestly, some days I'm in the house and I look rough, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I, I don't agree. In my eyes, she's always beautiful. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, Guys, what a great husband. Like, he always looks pretty uh, oh, to me. Oh, gosh, I'm about to cry about that. But, yes, some days, you know, and I'm not going to make any... Oh, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to make anybody feel like, oh, you know, it's always perfect. No, it's right. not. But you need to know that Instagram is my happy wall. Twitter is where I'm engaging on a lot of things and I'm giving my idea on a lot of things. Facebook, I use less. Um... But if something is really hot one for me, like I might go on Facebook and I would have something to say about it. Um, I don't, I really and truly avoid Facebook Messenger. I don't like WhatsApp. And it is because people bombard those two spaces with a lot of misinformation. Yes. The people who wake up and they forward their devotional pictures to you or their inspirational scriptures. That's great. I read my Bible. We do our devotion together. I don't need to get all of it from everybody else. Um, Facebook now, Ooh, Facebook is a whole different beast. Um, but I know that authors use it in ways that make it very important. So, mm -hmm. the matter is, simple terms and all that, fit, um, my social media platforms have certainly helped me to network with many people. I found a lot of inspiration there. I've connected with great people, and it allows me to keep in touch with my friends. One of my bridesmaids is she lives all the way in Ghana and she traveled here for the wedding so I can keep up with her and her daughter um, mm -hmm. on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, I've met amazing people. For me, even though my Instagram is private, the fact of the matter is there are some people that I know that are a part of my community. They like everything, they comment, they send messages. Mm -hmm. They just, you know, really lovely and it's, it's such a warm space. Twitter now, if I want to shout my opinions, like my, I see my friend Mikhail is here because he commented earlier. I, I'm not a lawyer, but I like to peep into lawyer Twitter and just look at what they're saying because I learn a lot. Yeah. Is. What I read for my master's is a little bit of a nuanced field on social impact bonds. So I keep up with the experts in social impact bonds on that space. Right? I know every little publication that has come out about it and so on. A friend and I have been able to start working on a paper for publications, an academic paper now, just because we've been keeping in touch on social media over the years. So it's a connecting space, a networking space, and it's a happy space for me on Instagram. Twitter now is networking. Twitter is developing your ideas, refining ideas, sharing information. That's how I see the spaces. And you know what, Kamisha, what I love is that you spoke about the different ways that you use different platforms. Because I think a lot of people feel that if I present myself this way on Instagram, it must be the same on Twitter, LinkedIn, everything. And each platform, depending on who your audience is, what you share might be different. You're still the same person, but people get to see different aspects of your brand depending on the audience that's on a particular platform yes so i'm really happy that you share that because i think that's a space where like a gray area where people are a lot of times are not sure what to post on each platform so they'll just go with sharing everything and we all know twitter is super fast paced um very high energy mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes and the discussions are real so you get to showcase a different side of your brand on that platform yeah, yeah. so what i want to know is what advice would you give but other individuals who are seeing you who may follow you your tribe what would you say to them about what they should or should not be sharing on social media <laughs> okay so this can be a tricky one because yes. you want persons to feel like you know they can be whoever they want to be online but the reality is your online footprint matters um, a lot of people feel like they can do and say anything and it is of no consequence. I am not someone who believes that. I believe that yeah. all of it matters because all of it represents who you are. And so people can choose from that if they want to associate with you or not based on how mm -hmm. you present yourselves. So if you're in a seeking space in terms of a job seeking space, opportunity seeking space, um, a network seeking space, then you must position yourself in a way that it would be attractive to persons who would want to connect with you. Mm -hmm. But also still be true to yourself. Now, if you are, I, I know that we've developed a whole, um, 
a field of, of digital marketers and influencers and so on. That is a completely separate thing. And if you're about becoming a, a brand representative for someone else, then you must position yourself you know, because different brands require different things. So you've yeah. heard people that for me, I'm a Michelle Obama girl, but for someone else, one of my friends, you know, it's a spice, you know, scorn them and all that. And if you are going to be in that space and a Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B and so on, if you're going to be in that space, then your audience is different and how you're presenting is going to be different as well, right? So you yeah. know who you want to connect with. If you're if you're an artsy person and a creative, there's a whole different side of Instagram and Twitter that you connect yes. with for presenting your work and so on. Now, I, in terms of just finally on how what what would I say to you on what to present? Know your audience. I mean, you are all yeah. star experts, so you know. Know your audience and who you want to connect with and, and the kind of material that's authentic to you that you want to share. Two, still be very cautious. Social media can be a dangerous place. People have had stalkers. People have, I mean, oh, oh, Lord. People have been defamatory. <laughs> and and they, they, you know, just be careful of what you say because some people feel like social media, if, even if they're not using their real name, that they're anonymous. I think there's very little anonymity on yes. the platform. And so be very careful. People will find you if you've been calling their names in ways that are just really not good. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And your like true self, connect with people. Don't be overbearing. Sometimes, one of the things that I think has happened to me, Naomi, that I want to say to anybody who's following me as well, is to remember that I'm first a human and all the challenges that you will have that you want to share with me and you want my help with, I might be having those challenges too. I remember one time someone reached out to me. I mean, she had always been interacting, always been warm and great. But I, she would know that at the time I had just had a baby. And so she reached out and she was like, oh, I've been trying to speak to you about getting some help or something and you wouldn't even answer. And I was like, I had to think about if I wanted to and yeah. um, at all. So sometimes I and I said and I recently said it on Facebook. Remember that people on social media are humans first. So just think of that when you are engaging. The abuse is not necessary and so mm -hmm. on. Be very cautious, but represent your authentic selves. And I like that you you were able to make what I was saying so very nuanced, Naomi. And it is that. Focus on the fact that each platform might require a different thing from you yeah. and use them accordingly. So a lot of times people reach yeah. out to me to advertise things on my Instagram. No, my Instagram is my happy wall. Yep. Um, I might share it in my story. Yeah. If I actually, it's so funny because Gordon and I talked about it today. If I actually use the product and I like it, I will You'll share it anyway. Me, yeah. So there are certain brands and people people say to me, yeah, man, I associate you with like liquor tea. Or so because I'm always sharing liquor tea. Or people will say to me, listen, you posted about Simos, so we went to the commissary. And I think I feel like we must have shares in these companies now because we go so often. But yes, so if it's just just be authentic, be yourself. Um but know your audience. And if in knowing your audience, it might mean that if you are a person who is putting out your art you have to curate your space and know yeah. that you don't have to respond to everything you don't need to be all things to all people mm -hmm. but make sure that if you if your social media comes under scrutiny then you can stand up and say no this is me this is who i am yeah. and how i represent myself so i just wanted to say um you know within that context i don't think kimisha does a good job at selling herself. Um, he always says it. And, and, and let, me, let me explain. So I don't fan, I don't fan, I'm not a fanboy for my wife, for sure. Like it's a real <laughs> thing, right? No, no joke. Um, and I, I, I never, I love it. So I never put out this facade that we have a perfect marriage and we don't have any issues or anything. Like that. No, 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 of course. Um, no, it's a serious thing. So, so before I knew Kimisha, personally, I knew her professionally and I admired her work, right? So we followed each other on social media, but we were in the same social circle, but I didn't know her well. I'd have seen her work. I'm like, wow, this, you know, this young woman is very impressive, right? So um, I, I tell her all the time, she speaks essentially fluent Spanish, but she doesn't talk about it. So I'm like, hey, why don't you talk about the fact that you speak, 
speak Spanish. So like when I meet somebody else who speaks um, oh, Spanish, I'm like, my wife speaks Spanish and then I want them to talk to each other oh, in Spanish. Because, no, no, because here's the thing. I've tried to teach myself a foreign language for so long, but I don't have the attention span for it and I always fail at it, right? Now, I have somebody in my life who can speak. I can't, for, I can't wait to go to a foreign, um, uh, a Spanish speaking country with her to kind of see her execute. Um, yes. That's an impressive thing for me. So, um, like, <laughs> Sometimes I'm trying to get access to, to certain people, or I'm trying to get to know them. As you said, oh yeah, man, I know them. I'm like, what do you mean you know them? But you've never said anything to me before. I'm like, yeah, man, I know this person. I'm like, okay. So I'm the kind of person who will take up the phone, call whoever yeah. person that X over the night because I don't right. care. like. I have a problem. I'm calling the CEO of the organization. Kamisha be like, oh, you can't call him so late. You know, I'm like, no, 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 no. So. My, my approach and her approach to things are so different and yeah. I rub off on her and she rubs off on me. But yeah, I'm a big, I I, I, I am a fan of my wife. Like, <laughs> like no joke. I, I love my wife and I'm privileged to, to have her as my wife. It's a real thing. So again, I'm not saying to say that or try to put on this for sure that it's, no, it's not perfect. But yeah. looking at my wife from a distance, I do have a lot of admiration and respect for her. And that has not changed. That has only gotten better over time, right? Now that I'm seeing her in mommy role, I just really have to step back and look and I'm like, yo, this is crazy. I love this. Like, you're so good at it. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, you know, so if for me, it's 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 an amazing thing. And um I could talk about her all day. I don't, you know, I and let me tell you, I love talking about myself, right? I'll talk about myself, but when it comes to my wife, like I would opt to talking about her versus talking about my food because I want to sell her. I want to see her be her best self yeah. and grow. And yeah, that's important I mean, to me. So I will take it back to the question, of Naomi. Yes, there's room for improvement. Um, for example, <laughs> I certainly need to add so many milestones to my LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is such a valuable platform. Like it's mm -hmm. the best kept secret. Yeah. Let me let me let me share one of my yes. most experiences with LinkedIn. So when I was in the UK doing my master's, I needed, as I said, I studied something called social impact funds and their feasibility in Jamaica. So it's a little nuanced area of public financing and social goods, so sort of linking um, public funding, doing good with, with corporate funders, right? Um, so you could link your social policy with that sort of private sector funding. It is a very nuanced field and so, getting access to experts to interview could have proved very difficult. We don't have any in Jamaica. We don't have any in the Caribbean. What I used was LinkedIn. And the persons who accepted my interview request said to me that they went to LinkedIn to validate who I was as well. Absolutely. So sit down with me yeah. and I was able to sit down with experts not <laughs> corporate financing from the US and from the UK. Otherwise, they would not have had any interviews with me. So it's a really, really important space. And I do and not just a resume holder. No, it's not. It's not. It's a great network. No. Yeah. yeah. And you know, the thing is that when people search for you online, your LinkedIn results usually come in the top five search results for your name. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you have a page and it's not active, or if you have a page that you haven't updated in three years, it's still one of the first things that someone's going to see about you. And as you said, it, you know, it's what they use to validate or make a decision if they want to work with you or engage you or not. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah for sure. Yeah. 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 Carrie said LinkedIn is a great tool. Don't sleep on it. Yeah. Very true. Very true. And yeah. I mean, when I. When, when I talk to my students, for example, one of the things that I've included in any course outline that I've given them is how to send an email and make sure that you have an appropriate email mm -hmm. because those things are also a part of how you represent yourselves online and how you communicate. So that that is very important. And many of them have been fixing their LinkedIn profiles as well to be able to access the opportunities that are out there in many states. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So guys, we have a segment now that we call best advice. 
So Gordon, this one is for you. I'm going to start with you. What's the best advice you have received about business? Uh, go deep, not wide. Um, so I was, I can tell the story behind that advice. So I am a part of this group called the Global Shapers Kingston Hub. Um, it's an initiative of the World Economic Forum. And I remember being in Geneva once with a bunch of really amazing people. Um, so I went to this friend of mine and I said, Manuel, you know, I'm frustrated. Like I'm trying to meet all of these great people in such a short period of time. And he paused for a second, like, Gordon, just go deep, not wide. Um, and what he meant by that is don't try and meet everybody. Just try and meet the, the people that you connect with and build, build the relationships with them and you will have, you will benefit so much from it. And that advice has, you know, like, it has resonated with me in every single thing I do. So I don't go to any networking event trying to meet every single person. Like, I'll meet one person and I'm having a conversation with them the entire night. And that for me, you know, that's it. I'm not going to try. So, I don't believe in business cards, by the way. Um, that's my, I haven't, I have business cards around the place, but I don't use business cards. My, yeah. thing is, my thing is this, if we're supposed to connect, we're either going to connect on the day or we're going to connect at some point in the near future. And if you really want to talk to me and I really want to talk to you, you're going to take out your phone. You're going to take my number. I'm going to take your number. We're going to talk to each other. So I'll give you an example. We recently closed. Um, we recently closed an equity investment from Mayberry, right? And I've been trying to know Chris Berry for years. Like <laughs> every Mayberry investor forum, I'm there. And right. he introduced and I'm like, hi, and he kept on forgetting who I was, right? And I'm not kidding. Like I did this for about two years. <laughs> so, um, so you know, I kept on going to the Mayberry investor forums. Um, kept on introducing myself to Gary Peer to Chris Bear, and these guys just wouldn't remember who I was. I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm not taking th offense because I don't remember people all the time too. I forget people. Yeah. I'm a, you know, I'm a busy person. It is what it is. Um, but I kept on, you know, going to him until one day and said, take my number. I'm interested in what you're saying. We had a conversation and, you know, here we are um, a couple of months later. And I'm, I'm saying all that to say that, you know, I, I had a singular focus. I know that I want, and I've done that so many times. I'm not embarrassed when, 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 when you don't remember who I am because mm -hmm. I know that I want to form an association and a friendship with you. You're important to me. I admire you. So I'm going to make it work and I'm going to keep on right. until, and, and, and again, that's my approach to everything in business and, and in life. Like, you know, I, I know that I wanted to be with Kamisha and I was going to, I knew he was going to go to that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to keep on pursuing her until she said yes. Right. So, um, definitely. Um, that's, that's my advice. Um, go deep, not wide. And you'll definitely see the benefit that don't try and connect with people to exploit them connect with them because yes. you believe that you can genuinely benefit from their friendship and that they can benefit from, from being friends with you. So there yes. are people there who are great who I just won't connect with because we don't get along well and that's fine. Yeah. Right? That's okay. So that's my advice. Yeah. I love that. So, you know, one of the things that we always talk about on the show is that we don't like to talk about money. And it's one of the things that we don't learn a lot about when we're young. So, Kamisha, I actually have this question for both of you. What's the best advice? And let me start with you, Kamisha, that you've had about money. <laughs> <laughs> um, interestingly, I think some of the best advice I've gotten about money is actually from Gordon. Um, it's about not letting money, don't, don't, not being a slave to money, having a positive attitude towards it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gordon has this mindset abundance is sure and this is not coming from just being <laughs> magnanimous or or just being grandiose in thought but it also includes a good bit of faith right the faith part has grown more of yeah. because I mean, God. but um this approach that don't operate from a scarcity mindset about anything yes approach it that abundance is sure with whatever talent you have and all of that, mm -hmm. whatever I was doing, Gordon helped me to streamline. I was not someone who was willing to ask people to remember to pay me. <laughs> and Gordon was like, no, you need to have a system where you send an invoice and you don't need to be chasing anybody. It's abundant is sure. So more will come, but ensure that you have an accountability system so you know where the abundance is coming. Yes. 
right? And so that it's sort of advice <laughs> is something that I've gotten from him about money. Um, and I, 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 over, I'm not a woman entrepreneur. I don't see myself that way. But I've learned that oftentimes women entrepreneurs and women in business, one of the things they suffer from is being afraid. I think the baby's out. Is being afraid of asking for money, asking to be paid, and following up on that kind of thing. But Gordon has one thing he has is the audacity. And I have been able to be more audacious about money because I've taken it from the approach of abundance is sure. Doesn't mean that you mismanage the, what you have, whether it's a little or a lot, but it's not a, a operating from the scarcity mindset. So you can yes. enjoy a proper quality of life, but it's making the resources that you do have work for you in the best way and mm -hmm. positioning yourself for more. So you still put away, but you put away to build abundance. So instead of just yes. saving in small things that are not giving any returns, yes. it's best that you're growing on the abundance. Yeah. yeah. Because you stole yours and people loving it, abundance is sure. But Mikhail yeah. has a question. Mikhail says, Gordon yeah. always says, ignore the noise, focus and execute. And we must ask you, what does that mean? You know what's funny, Rochelle? I actually have that. That is the note that I created by Jani for his first day of third form on Monday. Wow. So I created a little note for him, and then at the bottom, that was there. Ignore the noise, focus, and execute. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's so I've kind of gone through. Yeah. So I've gone through, I'd say, different phases of my life, um, and I have my mantras. Right. It's almost like a rallying cry. Things that kind of get me going. Um, for years, it was get money, get paid. Um, but I'm at a point in my life you now where actually I view money differently. Right. Um, and that's not because I'm rich or anything. I have a different mindset to money. Um, my new thing now is, or my new mantra, my new rallying cry is you know, ignore the noise, focus, and execute. The ignore the noise part is, it's, it's a multiplicity of things. It's also, it's one, ignoring the doubts that you have in your own mind, in your yes. own, you know, you saying to yourself, I am not enough. I am inadequate. What are people going to say? Can I really do this? Ignore all of that. Forget about that, right? Um, of course, you're also ignoring the external noise because I remember, for example, when I started EduFocal, yeah. uh, and I, I've been reflecting a lot on it now in 2020 when all people are talking about is e-learning and rolling out e-learning courses and e-learning platform. And I'm like, seriously, when I was when I was 19, 20, 21, talking about this stuff. Nobody was listening to me, right? But you know what? I said to myself, I've been doing this for nine years, right? Started at 21, yeah. no, I'm 30 in November. I've been talking about this stuff for almost a decade. And there were very few people that would listen to me. But you know what? I was I was convinced that what I was doing was going to make sense at some point. So I ignored the noise. So that's the first yeah. part. Um, yeah. focus, focus is important and it can be very literal for somebody with a very short attention span. Um, it's not hard to start, you know. What is hard is not starting. What is mm -hmm. hard is actually continuing and committing to it, right? Yes. So, the, so discipline is not when it is easy. Discipline mm -hmm. is when it is hard. Discipline is when you don't want to get up in the mornings and do it. Discipline is when you're very, very tired at night and you want to go to bed, right? So for me, after I'm done with this call with you guys, I'm going to do work because I have some work to do. I have some milestones to hit. I have things that I need to accomplish. So um, that is what I mean by, by focus. Mm -hmm or focusing and of course execution is very very simple you execute you get it done don't wait until it is perfect um mm -hmm. it will never be perfect um just put it out the door and iterate you know adjust where necessary and get it done um and that is my approach to everything i do in life right now so ignoring the noise focusing and executing and that is the the explanation or the breakdown for that um so when i, when I tweet that i tweet it when i need to push myself or when I'm about to push through and have a breakthrough, I just yeah. jump up there and I remind myself that yo, you know, you need to you need to ignore the noise, you need to focus, and you need to execute. So yeah. that's it. And I'm having to learn a lot of that because sometimes, you know, I doubt myself on so many things. You can listen to just all the noise in your head or the noise coming from others. And Gordon is always there with that bit of advice for me as well. Yeah. You know, you know what they used to call mm -hmm. me in high school? 
they used to, you know what they used to call it Knox? When there used to be this TV show on, on TVJ called Brace Face, right? And it's so funny because I'm wearing braces again right now. My third time in braces. They used to call wow. me Shark. Call me Shark. Like, I was teased mercilessly in high school. Like, I, I remember, um, I remember, you know, it's funny story. I remember just fresh into high school, you know, my mother used to cut my hair, right? So you just cut her hair. And, you know, you, you feel good that your mama cut your hair, you know, and um, you think your hair cut look good. And you know, <laughs> get to high school, <laughs> brother, go look for you and say, brother, your mother cut your hair. <laughs> 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 it's a joke, you know. But when you really realize that, yeah, it's my mom cutting my hair. Now I'm embarrassed because I thought it was okay for your mom to cut your hair. And it really should be okay, right? But yeah. you know, my hair cut wasn't all that great. Um, so I'm saying all of this to say, uh, as an adult, I went, sorry, as a child, I went through all of the teasing. I went through the different stages of wanting to be accepted, wanting to be seen. I went through all that as a kid. So I'm good now. Like, there's nothing anybody can throw at me as an adult. I'm like, oh, yeah. whatever. But good to go, you know, because I see where I am in life now as a bonus because I never expected to be here. Right? Yeah. I never expected to be here. So I'm good. Everything else I, I accomplish in my life is a, is a bonus because I never saw myself there. I saw my peers excelling in ways that I couldn't excel. Um, and for me to be where I'm in life now, it is, it is, it is, I'm, I'm, I'm so hopeful and proud of myself. And it's also okay to be hopeful mm. and proud of yourself. People yes. think that wait on other people to be proud of you. No, 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 no. I'm good. I get up another morning. I'm good. I'm yeah, man. good. Life is great. <laughs> I'm happy. I've done well. I don't need other people to tell me that. I'm okay with telling myself that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So, yeah. question. Wow. What, what would be, and I'll start with Kamisha, your best advice you've received about love? <laughs> Oh, Lord, it just came into my head and fly out. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> the mother um, brain. The brain. <laughs> and it only gets worse, by the way. So, I, listen, I was hoping that it would get better, but I keep hearing from moms that it's getting mm -hmm. worse. Um, when we were, when, we, when I was going to the UK, it meant that we'd be in a long distance relationship. And of course, of course, it meant that it would mean that we'd have to figure out how to be together um, while we were apart. Our friend, Mikhail Jackson and his wife, Nirvana Jackson, gave us some good advice. First of all, Mikhail told Gordon to divorce himself of any expectations that um, we would, or I would, or we would always be able to talk, right? And uh, we had to then, and he recommended that we set a specific time to connect with each other. So mm -hmm. our time was Sunday, it was 10 a.m. for me and 4 p.m. No, it was 4 p.m. for me and in the UK for me. and 10 a.m. for Gordon. And so we'd set that time to talk. And one of the most important things I've learned about love is love requires communication. Um, it's always about creating the space to ensure that you you're always open to sharing with each other and open to learning from each other and mm -hmm. making it a priority. Maybe it's even link it to the ignore the noise, but you had to make sure that even if you had other things that um, were going to happen, that there was communication of the change. So we couldn't yeah. just, oh, I can't do it today because I have so-and-so. No, beforehand, we would know if we needed to reschedule the time. And that has really helped us. We, we, Love, love for me meant that I'd always respect his time and he would respect mine. And we would mm -hmm. respect the time that we blocked off to share with each other. I've also learned, um, and when I, I always give this bit of advice to other people. That's the one that came into my head and flew out. At a friend's wedding, Kamisha's wedding, um, someone gave her advice and said, make sure that no matter what happens at night, when you're going to bed, your feet touch. Seems odd, but the first, the couple went on to explain. Disagreements are a part of life, and disagreements are also a part of love, but they don't have to be toxic. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens is, if your feet touch, no matter what has gone on through the day, it's either you're going to have a moment of intimacy to reconnect, or you're going to take the time to have a conversation. So I might 
tell him that, listen, you need to go and get a pedicure because your foot rough. And then we'll start talking about whatever the issue was. But it means that we, if we're always touching our feet, we're going to have to resolve whatever was the problem. Mm -hmm. There's a sort of commitment again and, you know, having a moment of intimacy. So I want to answer that question too, because I answered it for her a couple of years ago. <laughs> um, the, the question is there. This, he pulled this, by yeah, the way, from her over my desk. You know, yeah, because I, I I wrote it for her and I put it on on top of her desk. Oh my gosh! The question is the question is <laughs> next advice about love and the response is love is not enough and this is what I wrote. I said, love is not enough to survive, grow, and thrive. A relationship requires respect, patience, forgiveness, compromise, self selflessness, and an absence of ego. My relationship with Kenisha started with respect. Respect turned into love, and here we are 3.2 years later. Our love is not a fairy tale, our love is real. Some days are hard, days that require patience and forgiveness. For the difficult days, and I love you, I'm sorry about X or Y, I'll do better next time. Is all that's needed to make things better. Kenisha is a partner in every sense of the word. Her kindness and her grace are second nature, her love unbridled for me, but also for others that she holds there. She has been a great teacher, friend, and the woman I'm anxious to call my wife. In our private moments, we plan, we plot, and we achieve together. Oh, what a great joy it is to know that I have someone with whom I can share my greatest fears, burdens, but also my successes. Even better, I'm happy that she trusts me enough to share her own fears and burdens, but also her successes. I was proud and privileged to call her my girlfriend and partner. I'll be honored and privileged to call her my wife. In my proposal video to her, I said that perfection would make for a boring relationship. I don't want perfection. If I had to choose between perfection and her, I choose her over and over again. Choosing to marry Kimisha wasn't a hard decision to make, but I had to make myself ready to permanently stand with such a strong, phenomenal woman in my life to continue to grow with, learn from, and love selflessly. When love is not enough, everything else is. So, wow. That is my, uh, yeah, that Listen, is my. Answer. I want the men in our audience, right? Attention. Are taking a lot of love. Please save this episode as a favorite on yes. YouTube so that you can go back and reference. This is very important information here. Yeah, and, and that was not my. Not my um, what you call it? Getting married. Your, 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 um, it was not. What you read when you get married? It's not my greatest style. Those were not my vows. No, my vows were completely different and separate. So wow, the right answer I propose, you know. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's and, and that's the thing. I don't think I think we need to get out of this this mindset that there's this fairy tale and people are looking on, um, yeah. you know, like or or marriage. I mean, our marriage is far from perfect, and obviously, like any other family, you're not going to be sharing your challenges um, publicly. I mean, I'm not going to be talking about the issues I have with my wife publicly, but. Of course, we have issues, right? Every single day. I mean, since since you know we became parents, we've had our disagreements. We've had things that we disagree on, but but yeah. So that's not to say that it's perfect. But certainly, I know that tomorrow is another day, and I'm committed to staying with my wife, being faithful to my wife, and we're gonna make it work. So yeah, yeah. That's that's the long-winded answer to that that particular question that I wanted to give some insight on. It was it was the perfect answer. It was I mean, I mean you're seeing the comments that I am. <laughs> I am and I figured that you read all of love. He sure did. Oh, he sure did. Yeah. Yeah. No, told, told audience to it and use this as I use this entire episode as a reference. All the men. Yeah. <laughs> all the men. I feel like I mean I feel like we should just wrap up on that note. I mean, that was really awesome. The fact that you had this piece up on her desk, and that you're able to go and get it to read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just went over it. Very impressive. Yeah. And we, I mean, we go back to it. And look, I mean, you've heard it here. I, I, I don't know if you have seen it on Twitter. The other day I posted because I was, he asked me to review an interview he did. And I went and checked. <laughs> I knew that there was a phrase that would come in that interview. My wife. Mm. There, I can't recall an interview that he has done. We've gotten married that he hasn't used the phrase my uh, wife. Someone um, said that earlier. And I, and I can tell you for a fact that um, 
I am happily married. I love my husband. And although I tease him about using my wife, my students reminded me that, oh, well, there's a certain lecture that you always talk about my husband. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, but Gordon's second favorite phrase is um, daddy loves you, but I know, and that is to her son, but I know that his number one phrase is my wife. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love my wife, you know, you hear that. So, you know, so I told her all the time too. I said to her, I said, I said to her, I said, babe, I see nice girls on the road all the time. They look good, right? Yeah. And my look, I'm keep it moving because you know what? At the end of the day, blinkers on, I'm faithful to my wife. I'm focused on my marriage and strengthening my marriage because here's the thing, you know, here's what other people don't understand about committing to your partner. There's so much to learn about your partner. I'm still learning so much about her. Yes. She's still learning so much about me. When you get to a point in your relationship where you can look at your partner and you, you can talk to each other without actually saying a word. I mean, for me, that's a beautiful thing. And over time, you get to understand the nuances of your partner, what you know, what your partner likes, what you know, what she doesn't like, that kind of thing. For me, it's such yeah. a beautiful thing. It's 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 like I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I'd say it's akin to to starting a company and, and going through the process of it. Yeah. So um, you know, you either you're going to make it work or you're not going to make it work. And for me, as I said, I'm committed to making it work. Yeah. Love it, guys. Wow. This was <laughs> such an awesome show. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you so much for the opportunity. I'm going to tell you that today I did a change of pace. Um, we, you know, he said, come, let's go on the road. And we went to Brooklyn. I needed a change of pace. And so this has just been the lid on a really good day. Yeah. Oh, awesome. we're so happy we were able to do that for you. I mean, you definitely brought a lot of joy um, and hope yes. to our our platform and to our audience members. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, you're already seeing a lot of the comments. There were so many comments. I mean, this has definitely been one of the most engaging um, for essentials that we've had based on just the comments that have been flowing ever since. I hope you guys have a chance to read some of them. And thank you for able to join yeah. us and to share and to share such wisdom. And we really only want to wish you guys the best in your businesses, in your marriage, just in your life. Um, as you enter this, this new journey of parenthood as well. I think you'll even learn more about each other in that journey. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is a journey. Yeah. Well, we just want to thank you guys again so much. Can you please tell our audience members where they can find you? Okay. Um, so for me, it's my name everywhere. So on Instagram, it's Gordon Swaby. On Twitter, it's Gordon Swaby. On Facebook, it's Gordon Swaby, but I don't really use it. I'm, I'm mostly on Twitter. Um, and I use IG stories a lot. And of course, yeah. you can find me on my website, gordonsweeby.com. So, yes, yeah, so on gordonsweeby.com, every year on my birthday, which is November 18, I, I write a blog post titled On Becoming the Age That I Am. So, this year, um, which I think is my most compelling year yet, um, it's going to be On Becoming 30, because I become 30 in November. Um, I essentially write a summary of, of yeah. the yeah. year that I've had. And I've been doing that since I was 16 years old. Um, so oh. is that you can find me. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm on Twitter at Kamisha Swaby, K E M E S H A Swaby, and also on Instagram. My Instagram is private, <laughs> but yeah, you do send me. Yeah. She's not going to respond. She's lying. And guys, don't forget if you have people <laughs> that are of the age that would be doing pep. Yes. Yeah, Out the edufocal pet. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yes. Edufocal.com is where to go. Yeah. And, for, and thank you for saying that, Naomi. And let me just give them a plug as well, that if it is that your children are, you're not going to physical school anymore. Look, Edufocal Pep Academy has full day school with all the offerings. <laughs> you have clubhouse, you have, I mean, where they'll do their extracurricular activities. Uh, I mean, there's so much that's happening at Edufocal Pep Academy. And yeah. One of the things that Gordon talks about a lot that I don't think he got to mention here is that Edgy Falcon is not just him. He has an amazing team. Um, why I'm able to speak about this is during the pandemic, uh, he has had to be at home more. And I we have had to get home more together. And I've gotten to overhear a lot of the team calls. And 
these people worked night and day. They worked during a pandemic. They worked remotely. And they're a fantastic team. And see, we have some who have even joined us this evening for this conversation. And I really feel like it's good to pick up the educational <laughs> team because Gordon always does uh, behind the scenes and on his social media platforms. But I think at this time, it's also a great opportunity. Yeah, man. So definitely big up Lance who is on the call, who is um at, you know one of the employees at edu focal and also a mentee of mine um very proud of you lance um you know awesome lance dale is on our show every week lance is what 19 no lance you're 19 right yeah wow says the man i'm very very proud of lance and the growth that he's had in such a short period of time so he reminds me a lot of myself at his at his age so yeah. Definitely, um, you know, proud of Lance and all of the, you know, the, the, the team members at Edu Focal. Thanks for catching that for me. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but really and truly, on behalf of us, thank you so much for having us. It was really, we really enjoyed it. I mean, you know, you can come in sort of uncertain about what you're going to be talking about. Yeah. Kathy, you know, I had that conversation. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we said yes, and I enjoyed it. I yeah. enjoyed sharing with you and those who tuned in. Yes, awesome. and, and, and my final thing is, guys, if you message me and I don't respond on social media, I'm sorry. I have a lot of messages coming in. It's not personal, um, and it's a very stressful time for me. So, mm -hmm. yeah, my apologies in advance if you do reach out and I can't respond to you. We forgive you. No problem. Thank yeah. you, guys. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye. 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 Wow, that was... Oh, wow, guys. Wonderful. That was great. That was truly wonderful. So thank, you. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, we want you to watch, rewatch. I mean, there were so many great gems, so many nuggets of wisdom. Um, share, like, follow. We're on all our platforms at Ready to Emerge. Um, you can email us with any, you know, any questions. If you want contact information for anybody at ready to emerge now at gmail.com. Please, please, please remember that COVID is still very much present. Yeah. As you all know, um, especially for those of us in Jamaica, we've gotten to community spread. So please be mindful of each other. You know, wear your mask, sanitize, social, observe social distancing, stay in if you don't have to go out. Please be safe. Take care of each other. Join us next week, Wednesday at 8 o'clock. We're very excited about our guests for next week as well. Should we tell them who our guest is for next week? I don't think so. I think they need to no, follow up and see who's coming up. Okay, Guys, don't forget subscribe. you are also subscribing for the first time. Subscribe. Yes. yes. If you're watching for the first subscribe. time, subscribe to the channel. So that you can get a notification every Wednesday at eight o'clock to tune in to see who's next on Emerge. And guys, one of the things that I want to make sure we all remember that Gordon said is abundance is sure. Yep. That is something that should be on everybody's bathroom oh. mirror. Abundance is sure. <laughs> all also added, make sure you have accountability. Yeah. So abundance is sure, but still be accountable, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So Guys, thank, you, well, thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your week. See you next week. <laughs>